Hello, everyone. My name is Brian Smith. I'd like to welcome you to the webinar today. I'm Director of Global Workforce Solutions here at Replicon and excited to spend an hour with you folks talking about transforming your global time and gross pay. Uh, I have been involved in human capital management and workforce management for almost 18 years at this point, and I've specialized in the global space for the last seven, and I'm really excited to, to spend time with you uh, this morning, as well as my partner, Curtis. And Curtis, would you mind uh, introducing yourself, please? Hey everyone, I'm Curtis Dohanyuk, and I'm a product specialist with Replicon, and I'll be giving you your tour of the Replicon platform today. Thanks, Curtis. Okay, so here's our agenda. After, uh, after a small overview, we'll talk about challenges around global time and gross pay, considerations to keep in mind when you're looking for a global solution for timekeeping, and Curtis will take you through a live demonstration of the platform and really talk about taking a balanced approach to global time and gross pay. And then we'll talk about ROI that can be realized from a transformation. <clears throat> Just a bit of housekeeping before we get started. You'll be on mute during the presentation. Q&A will take place at the end of the webinar, but at any time you can get into the questions section text box located on the right side of your screen uh, and, and send questions and, and we'll keep track of those for you. So really, um, at, at a high level, transforming and optimizing your global time, in, in our opinion, requires a new way of, of thinking. And that's where Replicon's time intelligence comes in. Now time intelligence is a concept that we have where we treat people's time as a valuable strategic asset. And really, as the concept goes, the better insight we give our clients into how their time is being spent, the better the decisions that they can make. And the better quality of the, the decisions, the better the outcomes will be at the end of the day. And, um, Let's talk about why that becomes important for large organizations. So uh, a, a 1,000 employee organization has roughly 2 million hours to spend in a year. That goes up to 104 million hours for a 50,000 employee company. Now, that does sound like a lot of time because it is. But the fact is that you can't produce any more of this time, so it's finite, which makes it valuable. In organizations that spend their time more wisely than their competitors have better outcomes, therefore have competitive advantage in their given marketplace. So, but why is holistically focusing on time challenging? And, you know, th this is a slide that we call the, the Franken system. And it really shows that time data can live in many different fragmented place, places in an organization's ecosystem. There can be time uh, in payroll. There can be time signals in ERP. There can be information related to time and how it's spent and how it should be paid in a project management tool. You know, some of these systems are on-premise. Some could be hosted. And all that fragmentation means that it's really hard to get visibility holistically into how time is being spent. Now, fragmentation of data is one of the significant core reasons that we talk about when businesses struggle with getting the insight that they need. And you see all these areas on the slide here that really stem from capture of time. So executing in any of these areas is really dependent on access to accurate and timely data. So if you think about it, you need correct information to handle union contract premium payments, to ensure that your job costs are accurate, to make sure that billing is accurate so you don't have leakage there. You need to make sure that you're compliant, you don't have payroll errors, that you're profitable. All of these things depend on the ability to have holistic, accurate, timely insight into data. 
Now, within any organization, there are quite a few stakeholders throughout the business that need to have insight. And they all come from a different angle, right? Because HR and payroll, they're going to need to see time so employees can be compensated correctly. The billing department needs to ensure that time is invoiced accurately at the right rates, whether that's costed internally or actually invoiced externally. And the finance department, they need visibility so they can see revenue, they can see growth, they can see profitability. All these different stakeholders within the business have different angles with which to look at the, the same data. Now the time intelligence platform is really designed with specific capabilities that allow you know, the, the different stakeholders that we talked about in the company to have access to the information that they need, holistic visibility, and unique functionality because each one of those stakeholders has a different reason for, for looking at the data. So when you think about deploying a platform, uh, which is different than an application, configurability is, is very key because configuration leads to fit. And we don't mean customization. We actually mean configuration in the tool so that it's bespoke to each client. Scalability is, is very important, and we'll talk about this uh, in, in further detail in a few minutes. Uh, but this is the ability to go anywhere for any group of employees, whether it's a large group of employees or a small group. It's very challenging without a platform uh, to be able to uh, capture all the different locations and, and sizes of employees. Uh, it obviously has to be global. We're talking about global time and capture of gross pay, so it needs to go anywhere and it needs to be secure. There are a lot of different impacts from uh, a data storage and data privacy perspective in different regions of the world, and all those need to be taken into account. Mobility really is a tool that allows the entire organization to be involved, regardless of which generation or what location the employee happens to be in. Now, artificial intelligence is something that we deploy to manage how time is handled and to make sure that things are accurate, that they are on time, that they are getting to the right people in the right formats. And plug and play uh, is, is absolutely important. Any tool that you deploy in your ecosystem needs to work with the other tools that you already have deployed because you don't want to fix one thing and, and break another. So really what we talk about on, on this slide is a comprehensive approach, right? And that's critical to addressing all the different use cases that a global organization can have. If you think about all the different departments within an organization, all the different uh, missions within different portions of an organization, you have to capture time differently. But generally it boils down, <clears throat> excuse me, into two different types. You're capturing time either against a project or you're capturing time for pay or absence slash leave. So if we look at this, we'll start on the left. Project-based solutions generally come in, in three flavors. One is, is billing. So this is capturing time to be billed externally in the organization. That is actually driving and capturing revenue. The second is an internal use case, project time and cost. That means how are we spending time and is, what is it costing us internally? Now, resource management is, is the third piece, and this is really looking at how are we managing our internal resources and staff? Are we over-utilizing our staff? Is our staff underutilized? Are we ahead of budget? Are we behind budget? How are we doing on timing of projects? Are we ahead? Are we behind? All those things. So that really runs kind of a, a gamut in a nutshell of all the ways that you approach project-based time and capture. Now, the second family to the right is traditional time and attendance. Now, this is capturing time for payment and staying compliant. And compliance is a big piece of what we'll be talking about today. 
Uh, and workforce management is traditionally what you think about. How are we deployed? How are we scheduled? Are we uh, staffed in the appropriate places? All, all of these things. Are we capturing overtime correctly? Things like that. And then paid time off is where you have generally a salaried staff and you're only tracking absences. <clears throat> and that can be mixed with timekeeping for pay or it can be by itself. So let's talk <clears throat> briefly about the challenges around global time and gross pay. And I'm sure everybody on this call really understands how managing global time is, is so complex, right? You have different countries. Within those countries, you have multiple locations. Within those locations, you can have multiple legal entities. And many of those can be very different from one another in the way that they structure and operate. Now those locations and entities have all different employee types. Not all of them sit at a desk anymore. Some of them can be uh, governed by uh, collective bargaining agreements from unions. That brings in premium complexities, complexities around remaining compliant exist in each country around pay and around leave. And it's a very fluid situation from country to country, but it's a very complex uh, challenge for, for many organizations that deploy globally. Now, those complexities that we just talked about is is really the cause of what we refer to as a traditional approach, which is a very complex ecosystem of fragmented, not only systems, but different processes, different vendors, maybe Excel, maybe it's manual, maybe it's on paper, all these different ways, all these different fractures in the, in the data. Now, it's pretty common for us in the global space to see an organization with 10,000 employees have upwards of 35 to 40 ways of timekeeping. And again, that's systems, methods, vendors, those kinds of things. Now, that disparate approach is, a, is another way of describing it. It's disparate. And that approach to timekeeping can isolate information. So really what we're talking about is these are the challenges that, that come out of those kinds of, of deployments. And we'll go into each one of these in, in detail. So let's, let's start to do that. So the, the first one is lack of visibility. Now, disparate approaches really, really put data into what we call silos. So each process vendor or spreadsheet is siloed data. Now, if you want to collate and compile these silos of data, it requires manual intervention. It may require uh, transformation into a different currency for headquarters. It could be a lot of ways of touching that data. And these kinds of deployments represent significant challenges for visibility, for reporting, and ultimately for decision making. <clears throat> now, scalability is one of the things that we already mentioned, but disparate systems and, and fractured ways of, of, of approaching timekeeping really limit scalability in, in two different ways that we want to talk about. The first is geographically. So if you think about it, having a separate system in each country or vendor or, or whatever the approach is, Having a lack of an overarching singular, singular system really limits the ability to expand into new geographies. And typically that's because localized systems lack repeatability. What you do in one country, you can't necessarily do in another, whether it's technology, process, or, or from a local vendor perspective. Uh, the second way that you think about being limited from a scaling perspective is the employee populations. So um, having a different process or even, even regional processes, if some regions have been addressed, really doesn't offer the ability to scale to, um, let, for an example, let's talk about a single country. 
it's very hard to scale to a very large employee population in a single country or down to a small employee population in another country without a standardized platform uh, across the world. Um, and limited scalability can directly affect an organization's bottom line because they lack the ability to capitalize on new opportunities in new countries in a quick, safe, and effective manner. Now, if you'll notice on the left hand of this slide, according to the EY Global Survey, legislative compliance is the biggest challenge faced by organizations. Um, and, and we are in the same belief system that, that they are because of the fact that, that we partake in the compliance business. And um, you know, statutory compliance for a global organization is very fluid across the global landscape. And unfortunately, we find, and EUI finds as well, that many organizations still try to manage it themselves in-house, which can be a daunting task from, from country to country. Now, uh, global organizations, as, as you all know uh, on this webinar, can have very diverse employee types. Not only can you have different employee types, you can have up to, up to four generations any, in any one organization. And that creates challenges to capturing time accurately, effectively, and in a manner that is accepted by the folks that, that work for the organization. Uh, and in many use cases, a company's needs can go beyond just time capture for pay. It can delve into complexities of capturing time against jobs, projects, tasks, and sometimes expenses related to those um, tasks and, and projects as well. So a lot of times, these challenges are approached with additional manual intervention, uh, which can lead to errors and in a worst case scenario, in, inaccurate pay and employee dis, disengagement. So fast forwarding a little bit, if a decision is made to undertake a global transformation, the implementation timeframes are, are pretty daunting and uh, can usually be measured in years and not months. And those kinds of projects can cause fatigue over time, can be very stressful for local levels that don't see change all the time. And even those folks that see change a lot at the corporate level, uh, you know, that's still, still a, a big project to, to undertake, which in turn leads to elongated timeframes and that, that trickles down to higher total cost of ownership, which means lower return on investment and slower return on investment than usually what's typically planned for a, a global transformation. So now that we've talked a little bit about the challenges, let's discuss important things to consider when addressing global time and gross pay with, with a new system. So these are the areas we would urge you uh, to, to keep in mind when considering a change. Um, and let's, let's talk about each one of these in, in more detail. But uh, mobility is important for sure, um, configurability when you think about country to country uh, and compliance. Those are really the ones along the scale that, that we'll talk about in some detail here. Okay, so uh, holistic workforce management, as you'll see on this slide, we, we talk about time and attendance functionality, we talk about paid time off and leave functionality, and blending these use cases is really important because that enables organizations to manage schedules and absences in a holistic, singular way for the entire organization. So then you have the ability, whether it's locally or globally, to really use that data in, in a significant way and avoid over or under staffing. You really want to make sure from a labor cost perspective and utilization perspective that people and assets and energy and time, which is a valuable asset, is being deployed the appropriate way at the appropriate times. Now, 
accurate capture of data uh, is, is typically what we refer to as a building block. The entire process relies on accurate data, right? If you have garbage in, you have garbage out, as they say. So the ability to capture all points of data for all different employee types will allow an organization to really envelop the entire organization. One of the things that you see in the global space quite often is as a project goes on and as challenges arise with data capture, we see descoping. Whether that's, you know, unionized employees are descoped from a project, whether it's this country, that country. You know, descoping really does defeat the purpose of the project to have a singular global platform. And, you know, I think one of the things that we talk about from the data capture perspective is that doing it right is, is a balance between the company and the employee. And what we mean by that is that the company needs functionality like geo-tracking, geo-fencing, facial recognition, those kinds of things, to ensure that the work is being done by the right people in the right locations, right? You need safeguards to make sure that, that what's being expected is, is being done. But at the same time, employees need some functionality. They need to see things that are user-friendly, any device. You don't want to say, hey, it only works on iOS. Uh, you know, you, you can't use a droid. You really need accessibility from any device. You need real-time visibility. And a good employee experience leads to high levels of adoption. And high levels of adoption is very critical uh, to driving the success of a transformation because if people aren't using it, uh, you're, you're not going to get, obviously, the, the return that you that you hope to get. Now, as we talked about, some use cases require the capture of complex time. And we've talked about you know, time against projects, jobs, and some of those other things. But sometimes that is in a crew environment or a team environment. So the platform that you choose really needs to offer the capabilities for managers and leaders to do things in the field. Now, that could be accurately tracking time. It could be time against jobs, departments, activities, any any level of subtasks on a site or in a location or related to a, to a product. And accurate data capture and insight into that group in the field is pretty key for those folks to manage and reduce labor costs in, in potential real time from that perspective. Now, one of the things that we see is that no two businesses have the same workflows or approval processes. So having a platform that allows you to tailor the workflows and approvals to your company's needs, some of which can be unique, some which can be fairly standard, you know, that's a significant reduction in administrative time and effort if you can get that right, right? Because the heavy lifting is done by the system decisions of where things have to go for approvals in certain instances becomes automatic. And we found that workflows that are based on exceptions only instead of entire processes and validated in real time, they, they lend themselves directly to process optimization and reducing overhead. So you really want the platform to do the heavy lifting, some decision making for you. Uh, within parameters that are acceptable to your organization. Now, compliance. Um, compliance is, is so important, and I, I can't stress enough how important it is, especially for global organizations. You know, traditional timekeeping applications make compliance the client's problem, right? Hey, tell us how to set up this policy. Tell us what your policies are in this country. Um, and Replicon is the only global timekeeping organization taking the opposite approach, meaning that we take responsibility with the client when it comes to statutory compliance. So what do I, what do I mean by that? Well, in every country where we deploy our platform, Replicon has a compliance team, and they research the statutory legislation in that country and find 
legislation that has impact on employee payment and also leave. Now that research is transformed into programming and pay rules that ensure that our clients remain compliant on pay and leave in each country that they have employees. So we actually tell the client per country, here's what you have to do to remain compliant. And as you'll notice, there's a dashboard on this slide, and that is in the live product where we say, here are your countries, here's the statutory items that are in play, and, and so on. So visibility of that is, is great. Now, the second portion of the approach is that our compliance team also continually monitors each country because things always change. So in many geographies, we're in touch with that, the federal government there once a year. Sometimes if they change a lot, it's more than once a year. Sometimes it's quarterly. And what we do is we capture ongoing changes, which are then updated appropriately in the programming of the platform. Now, this compliance process enables Replicon to do something that's very unique. At the end of the day and at the end of your timekeeping and approval process, what we do is we give you or your payroll provider a statutorily compliant gross payroll file in each country in the format that you need it. And it's a very, very similar process that we go through with our rules engine to make sure that configurations are set for union agreements and collective bargaining agreements as well. Now, a little bit more on the compliant side that we would urge you you know, to, to keep in mind when you're going through transformations is that this is really how the compliance process works for us. When we create a compliance payroll in each country, that resides in a compliance library within the platform. And in the upper left-hand uh, portion of the slide here, that's what we refer to as compliance in a box. And that really resides in our platform uh, and our team constantly monitors each geography that we deploy in for statutory changes. And when an update is discovered in research, we create a new payroll. And the payroll is effective dated. And that our clients that have employees in that geography, they're alerted, and then they're involved in an acknowledgement process so they understand the change, the timing of the change, and so on. Then on the effective date of the legislation, the new payroll goes into place, and the old payroll is retained for historical edits and audits. And uh, it, our compliance is um, deployed right now in 60 countries, and that seems to grow every quarter uh, pretty steadily. Uh, the next piece that we'll talk about is localization. Now, we have 20 languages. We have as many currencies. And we found that localizing language for employees is another item and approach that really can significantly improve employee experience. And when employees have good experiences, they use the platform, which drives adoption rates. And again, that has ramifications on the overall project itself. <clears throat> now, one thing that we would urge you to consider as well is involving payroll. Payroll should play an active role in any timekeeping transformation, whether it's domestic, whether it's global, whatever that is, they also need appropriate visibility in the technology. So you'll see here and in the demo that we have a workbench area within Replicon called the payroll workbench. And it gives visibility, it gives status, and, and really gives the opportunity to pay, for payroll to be involved. And it gives them also a single platform globally to see their gross pay in a statutory way before it's submitted for payroll processing, gross to net, move money, and do all the, those other things. And this level of process insight, control, and inclusion can lead to very significant levels in, in payroll reduction error, payroll error reduction, apologies. Now, this is a process flow slide. Okay, so at the front end, which is the left, our platform is very flexible. We have really a lot of different time capture methods. We can capture data with computers, phones, tablets. Uh, we can turn tablets into time clocks. We have all these different ways of capturing time. 
We can also get signals and time captured that's been captured by another system, and we can harvest that. That can be a gate access system, a security system, a project management system. And we also have employee profiles that come to us from HCM and HRIS platforms. Schedules can be managed in our platform holistically, or they can be sent to us if the client has an industry-specific scheduling system or platform. We also can serve as the record system of record for time off and leave, but if the HRIS platform already plays that role, we can have the data sent to us and we can handle the uh, process of uh, requests, approvals, and have that go back to HRIS. And once we capture all that data, our platform makes sure that all the data is present, it's accurate, and in the proper context. Then the platform will process the data, and that's when we apply statutory compliance rules, and then we have company-specific pay policies and pay rules and union uh, calculations to arrive on accurate calculations per pay code, as you'll see there in the box. And those are visible for the, for the payroll department and the workbench before ultimately being sent out in a statutory way uh, in the format needed per country to the client or their, their payroll provider. Now, the, the last thing that I'll talk about is this is where we talk about plug and play. You really need a partner that's going to play nicely in the sandbox with any piece of technology that you have because you don't want to fix one thing and, and break another. So we're a pure play timekeeping platform, sometimes referred to as best of breed in the global space. Uh, and we work with any software that you already have deployed in your ecosystem. That takes us to the, the demo. Uh, and uh, my partner, Curtis, is going to take it from here. Hey, thanks, Brian. I'm just going to switch over to my screen. Uh, can you see the platform, Brian? I can. Perfect. Thanks, everyone, for joining me today. I'll be your host in our tour of the Replicon platform, and we can look at how it can help you with all your global time and gross pay challenges. Uh, first, we'll be looking at the compliance dashboard and how it can help you stay up to date with legal standards across the globe. And then we'll take a look at how Replicon uh, captures, transforms, and displays all your time information in a meaningful way. So as Brian was saying, Compliance can be a nightmare. You have so many different countries, so many different areas inside of these countries that all have different labor laws. In this example here, you can see we have 14 different payrolls active in continents across the globe. So our goal at Replicon was to make managing this compliance as easy as possible for the end user. So we have a team of legal and product experts who are constantly combing the wire to make sure they have any updates on any of these legal standards uploaded into our system. So anytime there is a change, you'll get a notification at the top right here that says, yeah, you have something to acknowledge. And then when you go to this screen, you'll be able to acknowledge a change and it'll let you know whenever you've acknowledged any of these changes and boom, you're compliant. But there's more to being compliant than just clicking a couple buttons. It's also understanding how these changes will affect your organization. And we do this in a number of ways. We have our compliance team that's always happy to answer questions, but we also have some stuff that you can take into your own hands. So we do have a version history here right inside the platform. And this is kind of the Coles notes of what's changed within the platform as you've been using it. So you'll see here any changes within Alberta and they'll be kind of the short form. But if you want something a little bit more in depth, we actually have a compliance blog that is being maintained by our compliance team. And this is accessible on our website to anyone. And this is important because it allows not only the employer, but the employee to understand how changes will affect them. So here's a good example of that. Um, we have a blog post on the compliance desk for Nevada about bills regarding paid personal leave and minimum wage. And it really goes in depth. It tells you the active date, who it affects, how it affects them. And it just allows everyone to understand how these changes in rules will affect them and their organization, as well as their time off, et cetera. So it's really important to stay up to date with all these changes, not only in the system, but acknowledge them that it's going to affect your organization. Now you can subscribe to these compliance updates through an email as well. And you can actually enable these updates to be sent to anyone who you designate in your Replicon instance. So you can subscribe to multiple locations, single locations, 
whatever works best for each individual user. And that being said, we have a complex rule, uh, payroll organization. So here you can see we have, as Brian said, 60 countries and over 110 locations that include states and provinces. And this is important because we want to make every employee feel like Replicon is tailored to them with multiple currencies, holiday calendars, time zones, etc. We make Replicon the experience for each individual user. So it's not hard to set up a different experience for a user in a different country. And we make this as easy as possible for anyone. So as you can see here, different payrolls have quite a bit of different legislature that they have to follow. So for example, the Czech Republic is quite comprehensive. They cover things like daily overtime, weekly overtime, workday daily overtime, rest day regular time. So there are so many parameters that need to be covered. So we wanna make this as simple and boil it down to the purest essence that we can. So on the right here, you'll see the parameters that are covered. And on the left, you'll see an in-detail in detail breakdown of each of these parameters and just describing it in a way that makes sense for most people. That being said, we understand that there might be some slight differences in your rules for your organization. Maybe they're a little bit stricter than the legislature in Alberta. So we don't allow you to actually change these individual payrolls because we want everything to be compliant. But if there are some minor edits you need to make, you can actually go in, make a copy of one of these payrolls, and it'll appear on your list of payrolls here. And you can actually dive in and edit these to be whatever you need to be. So if you need to make them more stringent for your organization, you can do so. The other option is if you have something like a complex bargaining agreement or you have a union that needs additional ruling on top of local legislature, you can actually add your own payroll to work in tandem with any of the local legislature. And we can help you along with this process as well. But now that we understand how all the pay is governed within Replicon, it's important to understand how we capture this time as well. And we do this in a number of ways. We have our online platform, we have our cloud clock and our mobile app. So our online platform is accessible to any device with internet access. We have a number of different formats in which you can punch in and out or clock your time. So here's a traditional punch in punch out sheet. You can clock in, you can take your break and clock out but these can be all customized. So you can add as many modules to make them as complex or as simple as you'd like. So for example, in our timesheet uh, format here, we have different activities that you can log time towards. You can also have things like a payroll summary on the bottom. You can have attestations where the user must submit that they accept this timesheet as being true and accurate. So again, everything is customizable to be what you need it to be. But we do understand there are different workforces in the workplace. For example, a factory setting or a retail setting where you have plenty of users that need to clock in in quick succession and start work as soon as they can. So that's where we have our cloud clock. It's just going to take me a minute to switch over to my cloud clock screen. Just give me a moment here. But our goal behind the cloud clock was to create a replacement for the traditional punch machine. The traditional punch machine can be expensive and unwieldy. All you need to use our cloud clock is a tablet. And once you have this tablet configured, you can mount it in a military grade case, post it on the wall by an entrance and everyone can clock in and out with ease. So this one uses facial recognition. So you can see it quickly scans my face and then I have full access to all my activities. I can clock in, it'll take a picture. And this is important because it prevents buddy punching. So by identifying who's clocking in on any instance, you can really understand that your time is accurate and clean. The camera is super sensitive, so even if I change my look a little bit, take off my glasses, I can still clock in and out with ease. And from this screen, I also have access to all sorts of different information. So I can edit my time sheets, I can look at my time off, I can even look at my schedule. We do understand also that some employers are sensitive about storing information like biometrics. So you can use a QR code, you can attach it to an already existing badge, scan it up here, you're clocked in. Or for the most basic functioning, you can actually use uh, your user ID and clock in that way. They don't have the same benefits of preventing buddy punching, but again, we're about giving you the options and tailoring the Replicon experience to your organization. But we understand too that this doesn't work in every setting also. You might have a mobile workforce with users across the globe who need to clock in on an individual basis. And that's where our mobile app comes into play. 
So again, I'm just going to share my mobile screen. And so the thinking behind our mobile app was to make as things as similar to our desktop platform and as simple for the end user to get the maximum amount of adoption. So like our desktop platform, we have a simple clock in, clock out feature. And like our cloud clock, you can mandate that a picture has to be taken. So again, you know who's clocking in and out for each instance. This is optional. So again, if you're worried about storing sensitive information, you don't have to take a photo. You can also be tracking location too when people are clocking in. And again, just helps you understand where your workforce and ensuring that people are doing and acting from where they say they are. We also have our mobile timesheets, which are similar to the desktop platform. So you can actually log time towards specific projects, tasks, and if applicable, billing rates. These are all sortable, so they're easy to find, and you can make everything on this page customized. So comments, for example, can be mandatory or optional. It's all up to you. We also wanted it to be easy for users to check their schedules and take their time off, and this is all accessible if you allow it from the mobile app. So here, if you schedule a user three months in advance, they'll be able to see that, and they can even check when they work on an individual day and when their lunch is scheduled. And this prevents the age old of excuse of, oh, I didn't know I worked. The user has all their time detail in the palm of their hand. So you never have to worry about them being inaccurate or not being able to access a computer. That being said, we wanted our approval process to be as simple as it is for the end user, as it is for the supervisors. So we give the supervisors this nice dashboard page that organizes everything in an easy to use manner. Anytime there's an action that needs to be taken, you can receive a push notification or an email, and then you'll know of anything that needs to be taken into account. So here on our inbox, we can see we have timesheets that are ready for approval. We can actually batch approve or reject all these timesheets. But if we want to dig a little deeper and see what's going on, we can actually drill into each individual timesheet and see what hours they've logged on each day, if they logged it towards an activity, and on the top here, you can actually see Tammy has triggered a validation. And you can actually drill down into those and see what those validations are. We'll drill in, we'll look at these a little bit later, but validations are how we make sure your time is clean and accurate at all times. Another crucial component of the app is this team punch status. So like we showed before, you can actually track location when someone punches in, and you can actually see exactly where they've punched in and taken any activity from in the globe. So here we can see we have three users that have clocked in our Bayshore, which is San Francisco, lucky guys, nice and warm. And we can see when they punched in, if they've triggered any validations or warnings. And this is important again, because we want to know that our employees are actually working from where they say they are. But if there's ever anything like a workplace accident or an environmental disaster, it's important to know where your team is so you can ensure their safety at all times. And Understanding where our team is is only part of the deal. We also want to understand what they're doing on any given day. So that's where crew time comes into play. Crew time is basically a summary of what every activity that is taking place for any users on your team. And this is important because, well, you just want to see how your time is being used. And sometimes you have a team that may not be able to log all their time. So for example, a construction site. And with this crew timesheet, you can actually log all your employees' time for them, again, ensuring that it is clean, and accurate, and up to date. And once all this time is entered, we have this timesheets page that gives you a succinct overview of all the activities during that pay period. So you can see here how much we're gonna be paying out, the different premiums, how many hours have been worked. And you can also see if there's any timesheets that have been submitted with violations or overtime, or if there's any clean timesheets that can be succinctly approved. So now we understand how our time is managed and tracked within Replicon, but it's also good to see how we keep this clean. And again, we do this in a number of ways. And one of those is with our places feature. So as we said before, we can track where your employees clock in and out from, but we can also create a geofence, which is a specific area that they can only clock in and out from. You can create multiple areas for multiple users. You can change the size of this area, but this just prevents employees from maybe who are a little late to work from clocking in early, or maybe employees who have taken a little bit of lunch and needs time to digest from clocking in from their lunch. So it just allows that, again, all your time is clean and accurate. We also have timesheet validation rules. And these are parameters that can be set around any timesheet 
on a user by user basis just to ensure that everything is being tracked accurately. So for example, if employee logs at time before above their scheduled hours, you can either have a warning which will prevent them from entering the timesheet or you can have a soft warning which will submit the timesheet but allow any of the supervisors to see that they have exceeded their scheduled hours. So what this does is just really streamlines the process so you're not digging into each timesheet trying to understand what's going on and making assumptions from these data that you see. And that being said, we also have smart approval uh, pathways that allow you to succinctly approve timesheets that are, well, business as usual, I guess you could say. So we have these conditional approver rules that allow any timesheet that's maybe below 40 hours, or if there's a timesheet with no overtime hours, it will be automatically approved. So you're not sending these supervisors the same timesheet every week that needs this routine approval. But if there are approvals that need to go to a supervisor, you can actually create the pathways at which these will follow. So usually this is one, maybe two users, but you can create your own custom paths to be as many users as you want, or as many roles as you want. So really the process is up to you to make it what you need it to be. And we have enough inbox coverage to get you covered and with the basic approval processes. So once all this time is captured, you'll need to see it in a holistic overview. And we do that with our timesheets page. So our timesheets page has a record of any timesheet that has been submitted or not submitted in the history of your Replicon instance. And this is important because it allows you to go back in time and understand if there's ever a dispute or an audit, you can pull up this information and everything is recorded. Any change that's ever happened to timesheet will be displayed on that timesheet. And you can reopen, you as a supervisor or the end user can reopen their timesheets at any time and correct any information that may be incorrect. We find that some of the more useful parts of this page are the overdue, which will show any timesheets that have been rejected, or maybe a timesheet that a user is currently working on but hasn't submitted, as well as this waiting for approval section. And this waiting for approval section just shows you any timesheets that have been submitted and need action to be taken. It'll also show you if any validation warnings have been triggered. So we can he see here for Tammy that she has a validation triggered. And okay, it looks like she hasn't worked enough hours for that week. She's accepted the disclaimer, but she can go back at any time and edit this timesheet. I can also reopen it and adjust the time for her if she made a mistake. And as you see on the bottom, that approval history will be updated. So now that we've captured all our time, we've organized it, and it's ready to be submitted to payroll, we can move everything over to our payroll workbench. And our payroll workbench is just a centralized location to help you understand what your time data means before you export it into a different program. So another way that Replicon really exemplifies this global aspect is our payroll workbench. So here on this pay run, you can see we have three different currencies in the single pay run alone. We have US dollars, Australian dollars, and the Japanese yen. If it's more efficient for your organization, you can do all your payrolls in one pay run, or you can separate it by location and different currency amounts. But here you can see it gives you a nice update of every different parameter. So regular time, double time, overtime, time off, and then your totals in each currency. And then once you are ready to export, we have a ton of options. As Brian said, we are plug and play and we work nice in any ecosystem. So we have tons of formats in which we can export this data into. ADP, Ceridian, namely Stratus, just to name a few. And you can actually dive into each of these formats. And if your in-house version is maybe an older code, or maybe you have some changes that you made in-house, you can actually change all the values and labels yourself. You can also add any file format that you need. So if you have your in-house solution, you can add that in. And there's always CSV, which will always be perfect for storing in on-site or off-site premises for future considerations. So now that you've exported everything into your payroll, it's good to understand what all this data will actually mean. And we do this in a number of ways. One of those is dashboards. So dashboards are a quick visualization of all this data that you've captured in Replicon. They're great for showing leadership, exportation into PowerPoints or presentations, or just a quick glance giving you an idea of organizational health. So for example, you can see at our overtime by location dashboard, 
we can see that Calgary proportionally has a lot more overtime than any other location. So if we want, we can actually drill into this dashboard. We get the raw data up here, but if we need a little bit more information, we can actually drill into Calgary and get a good visualization of who's using the most overtime in our organization. And in this instance, it's Tammy Benson. So maybe this needs a discussion. Maybe she has too much work. Maybe she's inundated with the difficulty of the work. Maybe we need to do some hiring. Regardless of what the issue is, we're able to identify these outliers and hopefully rectify the solution so we can decrease overhead and prevent so much overtime from being logged. Another way we export all this information is through reports. And reports are a little bit more of the hard line numbers behind all this time data that we've captured. One of the ones that we find pretty useful is timesheet period details. We do have all your timesheets stored in that payroll section, but if you need a more succinct breakdown, you can customize this timesheet period details to show you only a specific week. And like everything else in Replicon, all these reports are fully customizable, so you can make them whatever you need them to be. Finally, we do also plug in with multiple BI tools like Power BI, Tableau, and Google BigQuery. And this is important because it allows all the information from your whole ecosystem to interact with each other. So using a simple web connector, you can upload your data into this example Tableau and create these beautiful visualizations that really help you to understand your company's health at a glance. So with that, I'm at the end of my demo. I'm gonna pass things back to Brian and he's gonna go over a quick overview of how some of our products have helped customers with all their global time and gross pay uh, challenges. And yeah, I'll pass it back to Brian. Thanks everyone. Thanks, Curtis. Much appreciated. And um, hold on one quick second. All right. And Curtis, you're able to see my screen. Yep, you're good. All right. Perfect. So let's just talk about uh, a couple examples before we, we get to the Q&A. So this is a 10,000 employee tech company. Um, they are 56 countries. In the U.S., they had 4,000 employees using a payroll provider's bolt-on time system. They had quite a few payrolls, 120. That was the result of five collective bargaining agreements, 18 languages, a lot of currencies. They went through a global payroll transformation, but it didn't solve the problem because they weren't capturing data and interpreting that, that time correctly. And after coming to Replicon, they have a single platform globally. It gives them governance and it gives them standardization, not only at the, the local level with the control that they need, but at HQ. And it accounted for all their countries, all the different employee types, union, non-union, all the, the premium rules from the union, uh, approval processes, everything that you can think of, really one-stop shop. It was a significant transformation for that organization. Now, the next group is a transformation com a transportation company, excuse me, and they had 2,500 people out in the field. Now, they were using SAP for global time, but it was not mobile friendly, so they couldn't get the, the functionality that they needed to the people in the field. Um, and it was really a manual process. And unfortunately, um, that really resulted in a, in a breakdown and overtime pay was missed for around 500 workers over the Christmas break. Um, that was a big change event for them. It couldn't be the same after that. Now, coming to Replicon, uh, we were able to give them a mobile platform for the field employees. It was big improvement in data capture, which was more accurate because it was real time. It gave them the flexibility that they needed on the back end to model their, their pay, which was complex out in the field, um, dealing with, with rail transportation, capturing overtime correctly. So it, the, the data became accurate, became real time, pay became accurate better process for pay, and the integration on the back end to SAP ensured that that platform was up to speed with all the data so they could do their internal costs and they could do all the things that they needed to from an ERP perspective. 
Now, last one that I'll talk about is an engineering company, a little bit bigger, 50,000 employees. Again, you know, these folks had a U.S. system from their payroll provider. Um, they needed more in-depth data because of, of project management. Uh, they were using a system for that. They were using Excel. They needed to track time against uh, employees and pay uh, to bill the clients for the revenue. Um, they had absence management policy issues. Uh, they had employees traveling. Um, and in HR and payroll uh, really couldn't solve that problem because all of it's out in the field, capturing data, getting the calculations right, all these things. After a transformation with Replicon, again, they have a single platform. It solves their project time use case. It solves their billing use case, their capturing time for pay, and their PTO use case. Um, so it was a, a fantastic win for them. Now, talking about it from that perspective, you know, what could your organization realize with a transformation? Well, it's different things to different organizations. No two are the same, but I'll tell you that a unified view of time and gross pay globally absolutely has value. I don't know how valuable that is to your organization, but it does have a significant value uh, attached, um, as does a, a decrease in payroll error rate. Um, better data capture means more accurate data, more accurate means less errors, less overpayment, less leakage. That's absolutely quantifiable in one to 7% decrease in what is being paid out to the employees uh, and, and mistakes, overpayments, all those things can go away. Um, the things that we've talked about, the technology, the workflows, the approval processes, the validations, those all lend themselves to decrease in handling, touching of data, uh, and, and reporting, everything else, administrative cost goes down. Pretty significant increase for those that typically touch data in a manual way as part of a different deployment. Now, we also talked about the components of data, at, data capture. Uh, whether it's uh, for managers out in the field with a team, through the crew timesheet, whatever that is, that has direct impact on labor costs. It reduced compliance. Again, a big ticket item. I don't know what the value is for each one of the organizations on this webinar, but, you know, it's kind of like an insurance policy at the same time. Increased employee engagement, that's, that's another intangible. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a unique time uh, in, in employment because for global organizations, not only do you have cultural nuances, now we have, uh, you know, different, um, different geographies have, you know, different levels. Here in the U.S., we have, you know, baby boomers. We have millennials. We have all these different generations that have different needs and requirements uh, from an engagement perspective with technology. Uh, and getting that right absolutely does does have value for an organization. So, you know, I, I think in short, one of the things that I can say while going into Q&A is, you know, if this is something that is, is even um, slightly intriguing, you know, we have the ability to, to do these ROI calculations and, and take part in those with potential clients that would be more than happy to do so here. So I would like to thank you. I know your time is, is valuable. We appreciate the opportunity to spend an hour with you. Uh, we are definitely hopeful um, that uh, you've seen value in this. And if you do have uh, further questions or would like to have a discussion, please feel welcome to reach out to me. Uh, you're, you're welcome to do so at your convenience. I would welcome the opportunity to speak with you. So uh, with that, we will conclude the webinar. And uh, I will bid you a good rest of your day. Thank you.